Hey, this is Ask Productions. Today I'm going to be looking at the Z Machine GT1000 Zalman gaming case. As you can see here, here are two 92mm intake fans. They glow red. The buttons on the front of the case include a power button, a system LED, two hard drive activity LEDs, a reset button, a microphone jack, a speaker jack, two USB ports, and a firewire port. This case has five drive bays. Four for things such as CD drives and DVD drives, and one for a small thing such as a fan controller. This case has two side panels, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is made of some sort of perspex material, and the other is aluminium. To get into the case, simply unscrew the four screws. Once you have done this, simply pull open the doors. Please be aware that these doors are connected to the case magnetically. The two types of motherboard that this case can support are standard ATX motherboards and micro ATX motherboards. The motherboard tray is removable and can be taken out by unscrewing these allen bolts. Please note that an allen key is provided with this case in the accessories box. When you open this case for the first time you will see a white box here in one of the hard drive bays. This is just the accessory box and can be undone by just lifting up this bar and allowing you to access the white box by pulling it out. Here we have the accessories box. As you can see it says GT1000 on it. Within the accessory box there are two packages containing screws for things such as spare allen bolts, motherboard standoff screws and power screws and one for various other things such as case screws. We also have a cable router and a power adapter. This case features a toolless design. By that I mean you do not need a screwdriver in order to install things such as DVD drives and CD drives. Simply use the thumb screws provided with the case. At the back of the case you can see another fan. This glows red and is a rear exhaust fan which is 120 millimeters. Please also note that this case comes with pre-installed motherboard mounting screws as you can see here. I will now show you how to install a hard drive into the bottom hard drive mounts. We're going to need to unscrew one of these screws. These are anti-vibration mounts. Once you've done this, simply screw one of them into the hard drive. Now that you've got one of the anti-vibration mounts installed onto your hard drive, you want to go ahead and put the other three in. Once you've installed the anti-vibration mounts onto the hard drive, pull back these two levers and pull up the clips. At this point, you're now ready to put the hard drive into the mount. Simply align the anti-vibration mounts with the slots, drop it in, pull each clip up, pull the lever back to lock into place. And there we have it, you have installed a hard drive into the case. Now I'm going to take a look at the back of the case. Here we see the 120mm exhaust fan. Here is the slot to put the power supply. Here is the slot to put the ISO shield plate. And here are the seven expansion bays. I will now go over the positives and negatives of this case. One obvious positive is the overall style of this case. As you can see, it is fit for any LAN party or just to show off to your friends. Another great positive about this case are the feet. The feet are plastic with foam pads, meaning that it will not scratch the surface. Despite the positives of this case, there are only three fans, two of which are very small. So there is my first negative. My final negative point would simply have to be the price. This is a very expensive product. Overall, this is a great case for gamers looking to show off their rig to people. If you don't mind the price, this is the case for you.